in contradiction to the practice of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, crowding together and pushing one another in order that they may climb the mountain of Arafat and reach its summit, also wiping the hand against it, performing salah upon it. And this is from the innovations having no basis in the Sharia. Furthermore, as a consequence of such climbing and new practices, people suffer unnecessary physical harm and damage to their health. Facing the mountains of Arafah when supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the sunnah is to face the Qibla. Al Muzdalifah. When the sun has set on the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, the pilgrim travels with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the direction of Al Mash'ar al Haram, which is Al Muzdalifah. There, they perform the Salah of Maghrib and Isha, combined and shortened with one Adhan and two Iqamah. This should be done immediately upon arrival. The pilgrims spend the rest of the night in Muzdalifah sleeping. Upon arrival at Muzdalifah, some pilgrims commit certain errors which one needs to be cautioned against. Among these errors are the following. The pilgrims turn their attention toward gathering the small stones prior to performing the two salah of Maghrib and Isha combined and shortened when the salah is the foremost. The belief of some pilgrims that all the stones for the jimar must be collected at Muzdalifa is another error one must avoid falling into. It is from the sunnah as we have already mentioned that the pilgrims spend their night at Muzdalifa until they perform Salat al-Fajr. It has been made permissible for the women, the weak and the infants to leave for Mina during the night after the moon has disappeared. When the pilgrim has performed Salat al-Fajr, it is recommended for him to stand at al Mash'ar al-Haram, which is a mountain in Muzdalifa, or at any place within Muzdalifa to face the Qibla and to make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in abundance together with the takbir and whichever supplications are easy for him. Next, the pilgrim proceeds to collect small stones for the ritual of Arami. He gathers seven small stones slightly bigger than chickpeas for the stoning of al jamratul Aqaba al-Kubara and the rest of the stones he collects at Mina. From there, the pilgrim continues his journey with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the sun rises towards Mina, constantly reciting the talbiyah in a state of humility and making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in abundance. When the pilgrim arrives at Mina, he should hasten in going directly to going to Jamratul Aqaba al-Kubra, which is the closest one to Mecca. Once at the Jamratul Aqaba al-Kubra, he stops saying the talbiyah and then throws al Jamratul Aqaba with seven small stones in succession saying, Allahu Akbar, with each stone that is thrown. Next, the pilgrim slaughters the sacrificed animal. It is due from him and he eats of its meat and feeds the poor also. After that, he shaves or shortens the hair from his head, but to shave is better and more rewarding. As for the female pilgrim, they cut from their hair a length of one finger joint. To perform the rituals in the order mentioned is best. However, if one should change the order, then there is no harm in doing that. Takbirat, the tenth of Dhul Hijjah, the day of sacrifice, the Muslims from all over the world, and in particular the pilgrims gathered on the plain of Mina, the scene of the blessed day, Eid al-Adha, being happy and rejoicing over the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them. The people have slaughtered their sacrificed animals, seeking to draw nearer to Allah azza wa jal. The pilgrims will find the project of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia for utilizing the meat for sacrificed animals and excellent assistance to them for the performing of their nusuk. Takbirat. It is observed during the stoning of Jamrat that some pilgrims commit certain errors. We will mention some of them. The belief of some pilgrims that they are throwing stones at the shaitan. 
So they throw with great fury and anger, accompanied by insults and cursing of the shaitan. When in reality, the throwing of stones at the jamra was not prescribed except as an establishment of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pelting the jamrat with large stones or even with shoes or even pieces of wood is an exceeding of the proper bounds and an exaggeration in the religion which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade us from. Crowding, competing, and fighting amongst each other in order to pelt the jamrat is a huge error. It is obligatory upon the pilgrim that he shows friendliness and gentleness to his fellow Muslims and to take care in throwing into the correct place which is inside the basin regardless as to whether the pillars are struck or not. Throwing the stones all together in a single stroke in which case it would not be considered except as a single stone. The correct and legitimate way is to throw one stone after another and to recite Allahu Akbar with each stone. Once the pilgrim has pelted the jamra to aqaba and has shaved or shortened his hair then the first releasing from the state of ihram is complete for him. He can therefore wear his normal clothes again. Everything which was made forbidden for pilgrims due to the ihram becomes allowed except for intimate contact with their spouses. Tawaful ifadah. Next, the pilgrim moves to Mecca in order to perform the tawaful ifadah. This is the main pillar. So the hajj is not complete before performing it. He must also perform the sa'i after it, he is making Hajj at Tamattur. As for the ones performing the Hajj of Qiran or Ifrad, then they must perform Sa'i only if they did not do it previously with their Tawafal Qudum. Once the pilgrim has completed the Tawafal Ifada on the day of sacrifice, everything which was made prohibited by Ihram becomes allowed again, including intimate contact with their spouses. The Days of Tashriq. Next, the pilgrim returns to Mina to stay there for three days of Tashriq, which constitutes the nights of the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th. Or, if one wishes to leave early, he may remain only for two nights. In confirmation, the pilgrim must pelt the three jamarat after the sun has passed its meridian on the days that are spent in Mina, and he should say, Allahu Akbar, with each stone that is thrown. It is from the sunnah, after having pelted the small jamarat, and then again after the middle jamra, to stand facing the qibla, with raised hands, and to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for whatever one wishes. As for the jamra, closest to Mecca, which is jamra to aqaba one does not stand nor supplicate after pelting it. For he who intends to stay only two days, he must pelt the three jamarat on the twelfth day. After the sun passes its meridian, then he must leave Mina before the sun sets. For if the sun sets and he has not begun his journey to leave, there he must remain and stay for the night of the 13th and pelt the Jamarat on the 13th day. The Farewell Tawaf The journey takes us back to the noble city of Mecca one more time for the performance of the Tawaf around the ancient house, bringing the whole journey close to its completion. After the pilgrim has completed the performance of their ansak with all their pillars and obligations, then they should make their final act the farewell tawaf around the sacred house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In compliance with the order of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which was reported to have said, None of you should depart until he has made his final act at the house of Allah. So the farewell tawaf is the final obligation of the hajj which the pilgrim must perform immediately before his direct return journey to his home country. No one is excused from the farewell tawaf except the woman in menstruation or those in the post-childbirth conditions. The Prophet ﷺ's city, the manner of visiting the Prophet's mosque, the place towards which the Prophet ﷺ migrated and where he was finally buried. We prepare for the journey of visiting the Prophet's mosque, which is one of the three mosques besides which it is not allowed to make a specific journey towards as the Prophet ﷺ was reported to have said. Don't prepare for a specific journey towards any mosque except the three which are the sacred mosque in Mecca my mosque and Masjid al-Aqsa. Visiting the Prophet's mosque is not a condition nor an obligation for Hajj. In fact, it has no connection or any relation to Hajj and there is no state of Ihram for it. However, 
Visiting it is prescribed and recommended for any time throughout the year as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it possible and facilitated one's arrival at the land of the two holy sanctuaries. It would be highly recommended to travel to the city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to perform salah in the Prophet's mosque in which a single salah is counted as being more superior than a thousand salah performed in any mosque except the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca in which one salah is superior to 100,000. Also, the person should give salutations to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Dear Visitor, when you arrive at the Prophet's Mosque, proceed with your right foot when entering and say, I seek refuge with Allah, the Supreme, and His noble face, and His everlasting authority from the accused devil. O Allah, open the doors of your mercy for me. This supplication is prescribed to be recited upon entering all mosques. After entering the mosque, hasten to perform the two raka'ah of salah known as Tahayyatul Masjid. And how excellent it would be if this salah could be performed in a rawda But if that is not possible, then perform the salah at any place in the mosque. Next, go to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ and stand in front of it and face it. You should begin with salutation upon the Prophet ﷺ in a sensible manner and in a low voice, saying, Peace be upon you, O Prophet, and also the mercy of Allah and His blessings. Then, you should move a short distance to your right so that you stand in front of the grave of Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Then you should give him your salutations as you gave the Prophet ﷺ. Once again, you move a short distance on your right until you are standing in front of the grave of Omar. Then you give him your salutations as you did the Prophet ﷺ. It is noticed that some visitors to the Prophet ﷺ's mosque commit certain errors which are regarded as being innovations, all of which have no basis in the Sharia and are not reported from the actions of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them all. Amongst the errors are the following. Wiping one's hand against the netting or the grill of the Prophet's room and walls of the mosque, facing the grave while supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the correct way is to face the direction of the Qibla. After that, it is also recommended for you to visit the graves of those buried in al baqiyah in which are gathered the graves of a large number of the companions, amongst which is that of the third Khalifa, Uthman ibn Affan. May Allah be pleased with him. Likewise, one should visit the graves of the martyrs of the Battle of Uhud, which include the grave of the leader of martyrs, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. You should greet them. Assalamu alaykum ahl al-diyar min al-mu'minin wal-muslimin, wa inna insha'Allahu bikum lahiqoon, nas'alullaha lana wa lakum al-afiyya. It is also recommended that while you are in Medina, that you travel to Masjid Quba' in a state of purity, which was the first mosque to be built in Islamic history. So you visited and performed salah inside it, as the Prophet ﷺ did and often encouraged others to do so. There are no other mosques or places besides these mentioned that are prescribed for you to visit in Medina. So a person should not inconvenience himself and take on traveling here and there to places for which there is no reward in visiting. It is most fitting upon the pilgrims of Hajj or Umrah when he returns to his home country that he should bear in mind what he has performed from the rituals of Hajj. We ask Allah the Most High to grant everyone a Hajj free from sin which he subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts and is pleased with and that he accepts with all our efforts. May his peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his family, and all of his companions.